Welcome back. In this lesson, I'll talk about a commercial grade controller called Open Daylight. I'll provide an overview of Open Daylight, including the consortium of industry partners who are involved in the effort, as well as an overview of the Open Daylight controller architecture. I'll also give a demonstration of the Open Daylight controller in action, including showing the life of a packet through a simple Mac learning switch application, as well as the web interface to the Open Daylight controller. In doing so, I'll talk about essential Open Daylight functions that you need to implement to write a very basic Open Daylight control application. More information about Open Daylight is available on sdnhub.org, which is the source of a lot of the information that I'm providing in this lesson. Srini Sitharaman and Anurudh Ramachandran deserve a lot of credit for putting together much of this material. The Open Daylight Consortium has heavy industry involvement and backing. It's focused on providing an open framework for building on various SDN and network function virtualization innovations that are being developed across the industry. The Open Daylight Controller is not limited to OpenFlow innovations. It supports many different southbound APIs. And perhaps no controller better illustrates the concept that SDN is much, much broader than just OpenFlow. Here's an illustration of the Open Daylight Controller release called Hydrogen. At the very bottom of the architecture, we have OpenFlow enabled switches, Open V switches or software switches, and maybe additional other virtual and physical devices and other data plane elements. It's important to note that these need not be OpenFlow switches. In fact, when you look at the southbound interfaces that the Open Daylight Controller supports, OpenFlow is just one southbound interface that it aims to support. It also supports many other southbound interfaces, including NetConf and OVSDB, as well as more conventional network management and configuration protocols. In between the southbound interface and the controller platform itself, Open Daylight provides what's called a service abstraction layer, which abstracts these southbound interfaces from the modules that are provided by the controller platform. This abstraction layer, or SAL, is the main difference between Open Daylight and more OpenFlow-centric controller platforms. The controller platform implements various basic services on top of the SAL, and on top of the controller itself, one can use the Open Daylight REST APIs to write more complex network applications for orchestration and network services. The Open Daylight ecosystem has many moving parts. The controller is written in Java. Java was chosen as an enterprise-grade, cross-platform compatible language. Open Daylight uses Maven as a build system, and we'll see that in action in the demonstration. It also uses OSGI to allow the controller to dynamically load bundles, automatically register dependencies and services, and to exchange information across bundles. We'll look at an example of how OSGI allows dynamic loading of bundles in the demonstration of the Mac Learning Switch. Open Daylight provides Java interfaces for event listening, specification, and various patterns. In the example that we'll look at, a packet will arrive at a particular switch and will be sent to the appropriate plugin that's managing the switch at the controller. The plugin will parse the packet and generate an event for the service abstraction layer. The service abstraction layer then dispatches the packet to modules that are listening for data packet events using the iListen data packet interface. These modules, such as an R handler or a Mac learning switch, handle the packet and send the packet out through the iData packet service. The cell then dispatches the packet to the modules that are listening for data packets, and the controller will also send OpenFlow messages to the appropriate switches, such as flow modification directives. Let's now have a look at the Open Daylight controller running a simple Mac learning switch. First, going to start a simple three node mininet topology with one switch. We can see that with no controller, as before, there is no connectivity between the host and the network. I'm now going to install the tutorial code using the Maven MVN tool. MVN is the Maven command that compiles the code 
based on the pom.xml file in that directory. Maven resolves dependencies between packages, and the code that we're using here depends on the Open Daylight controller package. So Maven will download the precompiled jar files from opendaylight.org, resolve dependencies, and so on. This takes a while, but we can eventually run the command ssTutorial to see that our tutorial bundle running the Mac learning switch is in fact running. Initially, we started the controller running a hub. Now I'll illustrate the power of OSGI's ability to dynamically load bundles by changing the hub to a switch on the fly. So I've changed the function of the control program from a hub to a switch, and now I'll use Maven to dynamically reinstall the bundle. You can see that once the switch bundle is reinstalled, the round trip times drop from milliseconds to less than one millisecond. Open Daylight also provides a cool web interface to allow the operator or programmer to see the network topology and the flows installed at each switch. Like any controller, the Open Daylight controller has three essential types of code constructs. One for handling packet in messages or packet arrivals, another for parsing the packets themselves as they arrive at the controller, and a third for sending control messages to switches. You can see in these code snippets that there are several similarities between Beacon and Open Daylight. While the code itself here looks similar, you should by now be noticing that the above three types of functions are common to all controller platforms. Here's the code in the controller that illustrates the main logic behind the Mac learning switch. The logic is contained in the receive data packet callback. If the function of our controller is a hub, we simply flood the packet. But as you recall, we changed the function from a hub to a switch. So we'll execute this branch. The first thing that we do is decode the packet. The control program then learns the source MAC address of the incoming packet. If the outgoing port of the packet cannot be determined, the control program simply floods the packet on all output ports. Otherwise, we install the corresponding rule in the flow table of the switch, set the outgoing port, and then transmit the data packet. Let's have a quick look at the program flow function, which sets the match action entries in the switch. Here you can see the program flow function, where we set the match type and the corresponding actions, and then modify the flow on the corresponding switch using the add flow function. Open Daylight provides many useful interfaces and bundles that you may wish to use, ranging from things that track hosts across the network to keeping track of the network topology to keeping track of various users and statistics. Here are examples of some more user interfaces and bundles, including things that support topology methods, modifying flows in switches, and support for the web UI itself. In summary, Open Daylight is an industry-backed effort to develop a broader set of SDN solutions. Perhaps more than any other controller, Open Daylight illustrates that SDN is no longer just OpenFlow, but it's possible to integrate a broad set of southbound APIs and provide support for various types of cloud-based applications as well. It's important to note, of course, that writing a basic control program in Open Daylight is very similar to that of other controllers because there's a very common set of basic functions that any controller provides. Handling packet arrivals, parsing the packets, and exchanging messages with the switches themselves. The learning curve for Open Daylight is significant, but SDN Hub has a great starter kit, including a virtual machine that I've used to show you this demonstration and that we've provided on the course website. I strongly encourage you to check it out and play with it yourself.